Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. We are going to bestow upon us His grace and His blessing. Now and ever to the ages of all ages. Amen. The title, which is unique and I think beneficial, uh, profitable. What is the icon of the family? Um, we want to just talk in three different parts. The first one, which is the perfect icon, and then the second one, a little bit more liturgical. What are the features of the icon? I can add something uh, as background. And then we'll cover three different icons of the family. Um, and, and the characteristics uh, for for us. So this is just a, a brief introduction that will help us for the coming lectures. Um, so hopefully it's not too difficult to follow. The perfect icon, uh, the first time the word comes in the Bible is the first chapter of the Bible, right? And God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish and sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. For God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he made him male and female. He made them. It's not, uh, I think, a new passage for you. You know this very well. But the image of God, we know is the icon. So actually that's the original word in Greek. What is an icon is the image. Um, and so if we had uh, a picture of what God, um, or for God, would be uh, this, yeah, <laughs> this image. Also, if you look and you see that when it said in our image, so we are an image not just of the Son, but of the Holy Trinity, right? When the Father, when uh, Philip, when the disciples ask, show us the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ says that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And so the picture or the portrait for us is also an image of the Holy Trinity. We have one icon, but we have two, right? Because it says, in God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he made him, Male and female, he made them. So it's only that Adam is in the image. <laughs> but you see that it's one icon. Some people complain in Coptic iconography that all of the people look the same. And it is in some way intentional. <laughs> Sometimes it makes it easier for the iconographer <laughs> just to have the basic shape. But as we will see, that all of the image, we're all reflecting the image of Christ, who is the image of the Father, right? And it's through the work of the Holy Spirit that perfects our image to be according to the image. You use two different prepositions here, in and according to. In the Greek, in <laughs> and kata. Kata tef hikon, as we say in the Coptic. What does that mean? That we were made according to the image of God. As seen in the Nessus of the other fathers, they say that Christ, he knew in the form that he was going to come in the flesh. And when he created Adam, he didn't create, create him as a child that grew and took shape in a very unique way, but he created him according to the image that he himself was going to take place. Well, it's hard for us to prove. <laughs> this is an imagination uh, of the fathers, like it's not written down. Anywhere. But that's why we use the word according to the image that he himself. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the very image. That's why if we look in Colossians, especially in Hebrews, these two ver uh, verses are among the most cited in all of the controversies. Arian controversy, historian controversy, because it summarizes uh, the creation how Adam and Eve were created according to the image, and the Lord Jesus Christ having came in the flesh in his incarnation. The key word here, it's not hard for you to find, right? The image, who is the image of the invisible God, Christ, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. In Corinthians, the same, who is the image of God. And then in Hebrews, who being the brightness or the radiance of his glory and the express image, although in the Greek it's a different word, of his person and the express, the exact, the perfect. 
when when we fall, when Adam and Eve fell, so the uh, Saint Athanasius says the icon was tarnished. So every sin and every shortcoming and every uh, thing that separates us from the glory of God affects this image, right? And needs to be uh, renewed and reshaped according to that image. So the work of what we do in confession and repentance and in all of the mysteries is reshaping what God does and refitting us according to that image. So you know when um, our Lord was betrayed right, in the Garden of Gethsemane that Judas, he said, I have to, the one I kiss, that's the one. And many people, they say the reason why they needed, they required this, is because by the end of the, of the three years being with the Lord, they looked like Him, they talked like Him. They, so many, that's why St. Peter, when he was hiding, right, the, they were able to identify him, like, you were with Him. <laughs> you look like Him. And the reason, or the reason what he began to start cursing, because when he started to curse, it was clear to them that he doesn't belong to, no, then you're not. That was the best way he could disguise himself to not be with them. And so uh, they say that Judas kissed, he said, the one that I kissed, yes, it was dark, it was hard to see, but this was the feature that would be able to distinguish the one that they would catch. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, the express image, the exact representation. You know when they make uh, wax molds or chocolate? The same thing. I think you did, did they do that before? Was that this church? Maybe another church where they would have the molds, and then you put your liquid into that whatever that mold is, and then you can. So this is similar, as as close as we can get to the similar concept when we are made according to the image, right? That there is a mold that we uh, are placed into and always being renewed, okay? This is a continual process of life. So when Christ came and took flesh, that He uh, took again, He restored us to the image. He, he brought us back to the original and opened the way for that to be more uh, perfect. Now, let's take some features of the icons and most many of them will be relevant for the later uh, lectures that are coming. But it's good to reflect on this understanding of image. Because the Orthodox icon will put uh, many, express many um, truths in sometimes a color or a shape or one word even in the icon itself, although there's not many words. Like here, for example, they will put the titles Right? Mother of God, uh, for, for you to know very small symbols, just so you could identify, right? instead of writing out, because they don't want to, we put it in English on top, but that was, that's not an original icon, because they, the, the words are not as important for us as the image, right? Um, and the most important word is the one who's depicted, right? So let's take some of the features. You know that how they make the icon, should be made, not all of the iconographers follow this, but I'll give you the traditional. <laughs> um, so usually they start with a, a regular piece of wood or an empty canvas. And they start by doing the sketches, the, the broad lines as you see here. And then they will go afterwards doing the darkest pigments first. And then after they do the shape, they will go and do the darker colors. They put the gold here, but usually it's, it's supposed to be the last. I don't know why they put it. It's supposed to be the last step. And then they start filling in the colors from darkest to lightest, and they finish with the gold. Why do they do it this way? It's much easier. <laughs> this is intentional. And I gave you the hint. Yes.
they put the dark, like the frame, as you'll see here. Yes, this process, which we go from darkness to light, is the same thing that we said we sinned, we fell short of the glory of God, we were sitting in darkness, right? And Christ comes to give us light. And this process, which is our life, that He will take us, reshape us, renew us, and we go and we're added from the virtues. So we are lifted until we're completely golden or gilded. Is that correct? Ah, okay. So that's why you'll see. Although here they put it, it's supposed. This is supposed to be the last. But they will come and and, and you will see. Um, also here, they'll put the proportions. We're going to get to it in just a little bit. So I remember one of the disciples of Isaac Phineus. After he departed, and so the disciple was working, everything was just a little bit off. So we were asking, you know, what happened? He said, because Isaac, uh, Dr. Isaac, would do this part, and insist on doing all this, and then by training, <laughs> he would help them fill in the rest. But the, the, the master iconographer is the one who has the vision. And the vision is beyond, it's just white here. <laughs> But how to see through it, that's what in the part of the creation. There is a beautiful icon, um, I haven't seen a Coptic version of it. But when God breathes in the Spirit, like the Lord Jesus Christ, is breathing the Spirit into Adam. But you see them, they look very similar uh, to one another. You can identify Christ, we'll see how we identify Christ, not just by the name. But also you'll see that Christ is usually larger, a little bit larger in the older icons you can there's no doubt like he's doubled <laughs> the size just to see this the prominent the prominence uh, and that we, and that we should be reflecting the same image do you know who which other saint is usually depicted very close to christ like sometimes you can confuse him with christ although i would be very yeah saint mark St. Mark, because he's the one who brought uh, the Theorimos. So he will be, and I'll show you some icons, uh, deceiving, especially with Isaac Thomas, he would make him almost be confused. I think he's a younger <laughs> version, but uh, it's for that reason, because he carried, he's the one who bore, bore the God and brought him, brought the gospel to Paraguay. Um This process, St. Tilly of Alexandria says, we say that the law was a shadow and a type, and like a picture set as a thing to be viewed before the watching, those watching reality. But the silhouettes of artist skill are the first elements of the lines and pictures, and if the brightness of these colors is added to these, the beauty of the picture flashes forth. Basically, he's saying <coughs> God is creating us and making us this the beautiful portrait of who he's who he, he has in mind, right? According to him. in this process of creation, we usually are the ones that are most resistant, right? When God is trying to shape us and adjust this and take something out or add something in, we can be resistant to this. Um, and sometimes we would go and sit and watch, like, uh, if, you, if you've seen, like uh, Isaac Moose or one of the other iconographers that were in the early stages, what is he doing? We, we don't know. <laughs> and, he, and you couldn't talk to him while he's working. One of the iconographers was just um, uh, hearing that he would do mainly in the evening, all night. And so they're asking him, how come you're working? And he said, because this is prayer, it's like prayer. So if I do it during the day, someone's gonna come and distract and bother me and interrupt and ask me questions. I remember one time we asked, <laughs> One question, <laughs> you could tell there's no more, because this is the work that uh, it needs God to be moving in the hand. And same for us in the beginning, like I said, there's some confusion. We don't know what's happening in the early phase. And then after a while, if you stay a while, you'll be like, oh, we start to understand Him more. And then anticipate what is coming. And that's the same in our life with God. Right? So. Let's look at some of the colors. So the gold is very clear, right? What it is? The 
gold is usually symbol of the divine nature or the, the perfection of God. Also grace. Grace, the work of God in us. <coughs> You'll find that uh, red and white are usually alternate. So for here, the Lord is white garment, right, which is divinity, full, complete, pure, no sin, right? And then he has around him the red garment, the red garment, which is because he clothed himself with our humanity. And yes, the blood of Christ cleanses us and washes us from all uh, iniquity. <coughs> You'll have the saints many times will wear the red, right? St. Mary. And either she will wear white or blue or dark brown. You know why? The blue for the second heaven, white the same thing that you were clothed, he gave us. He took what is ours and gave us what is his. Uh, but it's not completely. Like we can't be completely <laughs> uh, the same. Or in for the brown or dark brown sometimes as the second earth or the because he created us from the earth. But she's the mother of all living, like as was told Eve. Now she's the new Eve. So sometimes she will be depicted in the dark brown, but they're seated also in heaven, right? That's why this is blue with stars, the seat, to remind us that they are not enthroned here, right? They have a heavenly. Um, I, won't, I won't go into too many of them, but sometimes in the in the tabernacle, the purple was used not just for royalty, as it's for royalty, but it could depict the incarnation by itself. In the, for us, the, we, we know that there's no mingling, there's no mixing the divine and divinity and humanity, but it was a uh, simple expression of that unity fully. Um, sometimes we'll have the setting in the background. And this gives us an impression that when God has placed us, yes, He places us in a certain area <coughs> to do His work and His will. If you look at St. Anthony, for example, well, this might be hard to see, um, but this is His mountain where people will still go today, right? So when you see the mountain and when you go there, we remember St. Anthony. As if God had created this place for Him and He put Him in this place. Right? The same thing for Medellin or the other saints. And that gives us comfort in the same way. I guess we're in a very mobile time. But God placed us and calls us to a certain place. To live, to work, to die, to bless <laughs> the place. And, and this is, like I said, very comforting. When Abraham, he was called out of where his family was to leave this. He took some of his family with him. He left most of his family behind. But called to a certain place, he said, in the land where I will show you. Why? Because he will be a blessing for this place. And even till, the, to, to, till today, the places where Abraham went, or Isaac, or Jacob, or many of the other descendants, they're still known by that place. That's why when we are in the place that God calls us to, uh, a few years ago, I was studying in Indiana, and they had the canonization of Catholic, Roman Catholic, of the first saint for Indiana. <laughs> she was a nurse, but she did great work, and God worked uh, with many people through her. So they were celebrating. Uh, one time I was sick, so I went to the, the place where they had get the medicine. It was named after her. And so they were telling me about her story. But you see, even for this place, so I was thinking, hopefully soon we will have saints in every state. <laughs> For every place because they become an intercessor for that place and that's why when we think our our life is not just random oh I found a job here this is a better house there uh, but that God is calling us to certain place to do work to be example to be a model to fulfill his will in this place wherever it is so that's why the objects behind where st. Peter was martyred right or um, where St. Paul, for example, lived not too far from St. Anthony, but it was far enough. 
imagine if they lived in the same place, we would have one monastery, not two monasteries. <laughs> but now we have, uh, you can see, where they did their greatest sacrifice became uh, a holy place. We say that it's the saint who sanctifies the place. Yes, we go to certain places to take blessing from there. But also, that when there, you are working the place where you pray, where you serve, where you sacrifice, we, we can, through uh, God's work in us, be a blessing for that place. Um, you can see also that the setting is familiar. See, you can, do you see the, what I promised you? It looks very similar. Um, and it's not, like I said, not coincidental. Um, Saint Mark, we can identify him from in the, by the things in his icon, right? So if it's not just the place that identifies the holiness of the person, but also their labor. This is one of his biggest contributions for us, right? His gospel. That's not Jesus. No. This is Christ. This is Saint Mark. So it looks like, but you can tell very easy from the, this. Oh, the radiance. Oh, right? Exactly. So this, uh, the iconographer prints, we see the, the cross, or the, the unique one. Um, so St. Mark will not have that. Uh, but he is writing his gospel, and the angel, as we say, it's not just his own invention, but as if God is giving him the message uh, from above. The holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, is not dictated <laughs> from heaven, <laughs> but inspired and moved, directed by God. Um, <clears throat> what is this for? <laughs> what is this? You know? So he wasn't a fisherman, but this boat has a different, in the icon of St. Paul, the uh, St. Sir, St. Peter, the boat would remind us of that he's a fisherman. But here it's a very different. It's not Saint Mark. This is a representation of the church, the Ark of the New Covenant, the the, the, the church, in which again he's he helped to establish. God sent him to establish the church in Alexandria. So this is in a safe harbors, the safe harbor of Saudi. You see that this is also. Uh, a representation of the church, but it was a library of Alexandria, famous place, or um, sorry, the lighthouse of Alexandria. Just the uh, Egyptian burn. <laughs> What's the name of it? A harem? Huh? Is it a harem? Or Maybe. like a stork? Or like a... It's a special type of stork. I don't know. What? Pregnant. Yes, yes, I, I believe you. <laughs> I don't, but, but this is when you see this it's only in Egypt and it's uh, very, that's why you see it in the pharaonic art as well so this is just to tell you that he's not in Rome or anywhere else but he's in Athens but also that the place the place is uh, important for the saint and the saint belongs to the place and this to show you again this is just the setting the the good shepherd right um is that the burden question? Huh? Is that the burden question? This one? No. This is actually a very good question. I should have asked you. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's not a coincidence. Yes? It could be the fruits of the Spirit are nine in the Galatians. So you're very close. <laughs> Sometimes de depicting for us the sacraments, uh, the, seven sacraments of the, 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 the sacraments or the mysteries of the church, the fruits that are in the church that also he brought with us. Okay, we can debate the number of sacraments, but <laughs> this is, uh, okay. And then why is his foot sticking out? Because you know the story of St. Mark, when he entered and the, yeah, broke, so, he, so it's up till it's fixed now. <laughs> so, but this is where he came. So it's a reminder for us about his. But you can look and see the other thing, the details in the icon or the saint's life, because we don't think of it when we have a problem. 
in our life or in our family or our work. But some of it could be, like this was the biggest problem, I, I can't walk. <laughs> right? Or seeing Paul, oh, I'm sick, I can't move. And so he prays, God said, no, you need this for your salvation. So we can find also in our life what is the sickness. <coughs> Do you know why the sheep is being carried here? The lost sheep. The lost sheep could be. So it's what it could be the lost sheep. Uh, I'll tell you another uh, it's a long explanation. But the one who goes astray most, uh, so the shepherd, he can break. Yeah. So this is when he can't walk. So that's why he's carrying him. Uh, or it could be a very big, like, we can, if you want to have a more positive image. <laughs> <laughs> the baby is still young. <laughs> but this is the same thing. And see that the, I, I, it's a reminder of the connection. The so, direction of the eyes of the sheep. Always, always looking at the sheep. Um, okay. Yeah, he also put seven here and here. Yeah. So, okay. The face, the icon, um, and one of the most important is the face. The face is usually larger than the rest. Why? Because of the mind of Christ. Because that this is the most important. Thing. In the, that God sanctifies the mind, to have the mind of Christ, will help the rest of the way. And that's why you have a small mouth, right? <laughs> you speak little, but you think much, right? Big eyes, because of perception, so they can see. And big ears, but oh, see, uh, the monks they have their ears covered so you can't see them. But usually, <laughs> they will have <laughs> larger ears, because they're quick to hear, slow to speak. Um, but the proportion usually... And I looked for pictures of the, I couldn't find, but the most important, they'll start by doing one of these. And then they'll start after the lateral one, they start with the eyes. Because again, that's when God creates us, the, the, the heavenly vision. But, and um, then they'll continue with the proportion of the rest. Do you know when we are um, consecrating a new Christian? Right? Or when chrismation? How do we do it? It's on the sign of the cross. Yes. And we start the forehead. Oh, yes. And then you'll go down. The eyes. No, mouth. Nose. 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 I always get confused. <laughs> I'm not on it. And then the mouth. So you go down like this. Yeah, and then they'll go from the ear to the eyes. <laughs> But the same thing when God created us, like it's very, it's, it's amazing how it, it matches the same. So that this person that we are, a Christian, Christian one who carries the cross in everything. And so that's why the senses are all consecrated. Right? I sometimes, for a, a newly ordained, uh, newly um, uh, converted to orthodoxy, they're very surprised. <laughs> we don't always tell them <laughs> because it can be supposed so why so that every part of our whatever we see whatever we speak whatever we hear that it's consecrated by God it's blessed by God and if we speak too much so then God needs to shape us a little bit more make our mouth a little smaller <laughs> I remember sometimes uh, I can offer too a, a good uh, someone else could make it and I could be, if it gets damaged and anyone they'll take it to him and he can fix he can fix anything one time uh, he, he made a mistake and he was St. Mark was ordaining Ananias and he used the left hand so Satan told him so it's a mistake it's left hand he said okay give me a couple days <laughs> so he switched so the good iconographer it's no problem <laughs> he can't adjust right so when we go astray God can he, he corrects our eyes our ears our um, so this is the work. This is the work of God in us. Any question on the face? Why the ears? Oh, the ears are because of listening. Quick to listen. Always, li and sometimes. So uh, we're looking at. Yeah, they're also covered because the monks and Moses. Their hair is covered. You can't. You can't see it here. I'll show you some other icons. Hopefully, it's it's. Uh, Ah, 
Um, so, very good question. So the months so we have, the, but the numbers are yeah. These are twelve and thirteen. One in the back has when Saint when the devil uh, we read the off of Saint Anthony. So that's why it was patched up here. So we have this. But um, some say Saint Pachomius originally there were four uh, crosses. The number probably I don't know why he put two here, but it's not always. It's the important thing that it's sanctified mind. Sanctified mind. What's the form? Uh, according to the description that we have, that he said they were um, uh, matching the nails. Reminder of the nails. And he was wearing white, not black. Because the white, uh, the white um, uh, linen was the, the, from the old days the most precious, the most expensive, but also it was for the temple, for worship, it was the consecrated. But because in Syria and other places they didn't have white, <laughs> so they ended up using brown and black. And then we got, of course, that's why Deacon Severus is reminding me we have to go back to white today, especially 100 degrees. <laughs> the Ethiopians, you know, they, wear, they wear white, especially they the Holy 50. Yeah. Especially the Holy 50. So, wow. Yes? So what happened is um, when St. Anthony, according to, uh, he had a vision um, of an, an, an angel who was sitting and he had a book like this and he was sewing, uh, he was, uh, uh, what's it called, making baskets, basket weaving, palm, palm branches. Palm yeah, palm weaving. And, um, so he was surprised at the vision, but then he heard the voice saying, you do this. And so he'll praise a little bit and he works. He prays a little bit. So then he made one like this, so his mind will be sanctified, so he can pray while he's working and always have the mind of Christ. And then after he put it on, but the devil was very uh, jealous, so ripped it off of him. It's in um, some Coptic manuscripts, not all, it's rare. It's, it's not in the big paradise collection, it's in a special collection. So that's why they have this, and then they put one in the back just in case he comes from behind. So <laughs> it's, it sanctifies. And actually, even <clears throat> the power of the cross in the desert is very strong. So we just look at it as design, but it, it's very strong. Um, we can tell you stories of that later. But the two things that they can't stand is the cross and an icon of Christ. Like maybe even sometimes the strongest demons, they can attack the relics of the saints. Some of the weaker demons just to be in, they put him in a room with the relics and the, the saint casts out the <laughs> demon by itself. But the stronger it needs the cross and, the, and, and Christ. The word of Christ, the Psalms, they weaken. They weaken. Satan, I thought the one in the back was Christ. 12 and 12. 12 and 12, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's different interpretations that come, but definitely why it's in the back uh, for that reason. So. Yes. Cover of the ears? The, some of the Syrians, they don't cover the ears. And if you look, even it's only recently, but this is like. They liken it now, so I'll give you the modern interpretation, <laughs> which to the uh, baby bonnet, like so it's like childlike, so it's protected. But yeah, we should be listening. I remember when we first the concert was, I can't hear. <laughs> it's harder to hear, <laughs> so you have to get the very thin. <laughs> so the liturgy of uh, you say something, and we can't listen it. <laughs> for that reason. Yeah, but if the I don't know, it can look funny. If it's not. Martyrs, um, I, yeah, I guess their hair is always covering, so you can't really see the ears. Uh, this is Saint Stephen. You can barely tell the only hint. The hint is he, this, um, and the crown. So they all have a crown. This is a different crown because he's a deacon. So they give him a special crown. But the, the important thing for the martyr that they don't depict like the gruesomeness of their death they're always joyful always joyful and even if it's not sure so they'll have right the palm branches to remind us of that joy all of them smiling they were all martyred just so we have the right understanding of what it means to be christian 
because there are other traditions where, like, if they were, their head was cut, cut up, I mean, there's a lot of blood. <laughs> the only thing that they'll do for us is what? They'll put, like, red, just to remind us they're wearing red usually. Not always, but usually. Because St. Damiana was uh, martyred with 40 virgins, so that's why they'll wear blue. They'll alternate between blue and, and red. Um, or Blue because of the virginity, oh. and it's a reminder of St. Mary, it's color, mo the most popular <laughs> color for St. Mary, as the second heaven, and so that's why St. John, the beloved, usually you'll find him with blue, light blue. Uh, you can distinguish him, usually, it depends, again, every iconographer has his own system, so you, you have to ask, okay, what did you mean by this? Um, There is a mistake here. <laughs> yeah, she's carrying the cross in the right hand. Maybe it's the way I put the icon. I'll fix it. Oh no, it is. I tried to find an excuse. If you look at the signature, it's not reversed. Oh yes, it is reversed. So he didn't make a mistake. See, it's the uh, way that it was printed. Okay, that was a test. <laughs> Also, her head is leaning towards the left, not the right. Yes, yeah, so it's so it's, it it's reversed. It's reversed because right. you can't see it. Her but head at the looks bottom, kind of funny because normally they face the other way. Yeah. At the bottom, the signature, the dates are off. So it's yeah. should have caught that. My apologies. <laughs> objects. So there's also objects which can help us to identify, and this is the work again that the small details, the small details in our life, are important. The people we know, right? Or the events that happen in our life, right? The place where we are called to live, right? What we may do. This is St. Moses, right? So we can identify them by not, not how much money they have, not necessarily, right, the titles that they have, but by their work, by their work. And this is why these, the, the background, yeah, the, we know St. Ophir from the hair, uh, there's a city not far from here named after him, Saint Onofre. Uh, it's named after Saint Onofre, or Onofrius. Sometimes they will say. Um, yeah. We need a church there eventually. <laughs> uh, there's also, um, <clears throat> like we said, the palm branches, or. Um, does anyone, does anyone know? Yeah, St. Simon, very good. St. Teji. So you'll have to know a little bit about this. Uh, this, okay, we'll, we'll move on for this. We'll get into three icons of the family. We have a little bit of time. Uh, the icon of blessing, icon of unity, and the icon of sacrifice. Icon of blessing, the wedding of Cain of Galilee, we know that the water was turned into wine. And we say this blessing every time there is a marriage, right? We say, may you bless this marriage. We actually say it maybe four times, at least four or five times. May you bless this as you bless the wedding of Cain of Galilee. Why? Because if you attended the wedding, you know that it needs the holy divine power for any, uh, any two to become one and to face the challenges, especially now, I mean, it's growing all the time. I was telling, I remember which church I was in, um, but the, the way the family is functioning now is much different than before. Before, uh, you were sitting, you were all living with your extended family in a village. When it was sometimes in Africa or other places, uh, third world, you'll find that they'll all live, the whole family will live in this village, right? And the grandparents. So if anyone has a fight at night, <laughs> everyone <laughs> the, will know. So the next morning, <laughs> they did not come the night. what happened? So if you're wrong, <laughs> you're going to be told, what are you doing? This is not right. If both have a point, within, within 24 hours, for sure, the matter will be resolved. <laughs> And there's many people to help fulfill it. If if one of the if one of um, the someone is sick 
you would have to be treated urgently. The family is there to help. If someone is traveling or someone passes away, there, there is the, sol the solution for loneliness, for division, for anger, for independence, for frustration. The, the family was there as a unit to help. Now someone can have the biggest problem every day and nobody is aware, right? Someone can be in uh, facing loneliness, division, difficulty. There's, there's no one. I remember some people who come from Egypt, they have their families, extended families, right? Living in the same apartment, apartment building, <laughs> uh, floor. <laughs> they come here within a week, like near depression. <laughs> Because it's very different, it's very hard to face, and actually we sit with them how to cope with it. Yes, you have independence, yes, you have privacy, yes, you have solitude, but it has uh, an expense. And um, <clears throat> so the, the family unit was extended family, uh, very extended <laughs> family. Uh, and even the people who are living in that small village, like we're just visiting, for example, Capernaum. Capernaum, uh, the whole city is probably not larger than this <laughs> resort. And uh, where the beach is, where Peter parked his boat, you can see it from the end of the village. <laughs> so if Christ is in the boat and there's a large people gathering, for sure you're going to be able to get there and know what's going on. right? When, when they're in the synagogue, the same. Because you can see from the synagogue, you can see the end of the city. So they were living in much smaller units. They didn't, it didn't take two hours or four hours to move a few miles. You weren't able to do that. <laughs> to, to, what? None of that. <laughs> so, um, which also is uh, one of the things that is putting pressure on us and our families, especially here in Southern California, the traffic is affecting our lives. Right? in many ways, but we won't talk to you today about this. Um, so the water into wine, which is the icon of blessing, how that the good marriage can transform the difficulties, the sorrows, the tears into joy. Not just for us in the family, but abroad, right? The embarrassing situation, they're out of wine, right? And to now this courageous proclamation something uh, poverty because they weren't wealthy enough this family <laughs> to have enough wine there but now it was the greatest blessing as if christ maybe he got many wedding invitations we don't know but as if he's going specifically for this purpose because he knows <laughs> in this place some say yes he would, there's uh, extended relatives we don't know the details some people say it was one of the apostles we don't know we can only guess but we know that <coughs> um, there was a great work that was done in a very short period of time. And that's why we pray in the every marriage that that hidden blessing, because not everyone knew, like the wedding of the, 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 the ruler of the feast, right? The headmaster of the feast. Kid to come and say, oh, where did this come from? What happened? Right? The disciples who were pouring, they knew, right? But it wasn't like a sermon that was given. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, but it was the hidden blessing that everyone who was present was blessed by it. And that's what we say. Um, also, I'll show you that a little bit before I get ahead of myself. Um, uh, the same thing we see in Genesis by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing when Abraham sacrificed his son, and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore, as your descendants shall be the gates of their enemies in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. This is the blessing where God was saying, I'm not just going to bless you, Abraham, but all of the people related to you. And we ask for the same thing, right? That, the, that God blesses not just the two people. And in baptism, we say, okay, bless this person, <laughs> right? In the marriage, we say, bless both of them, but it's not just both of them. We pray for who else? All their children, they have many, many children, <laughs> anyone coming after them. And we, where else does the blessing descend? If you'll hear it at the very end. 
Yeah. And all the people who are there, so anyone who attended your wedding, <laughs> were able to get the blessing that God gave from you. May the Lord bless you, my brother, and this is the, one of the final instructions, to bless your wife as you blessed Noah and his wife when they left the ark and populated the earth with their seed. Because you know, Noah's ark, there was nothing. So once they came out of the ark, everyone was blessed by them. As if they're leaving the church <laughs> and they're spreading blessings. I hope that's what happened. <laughs> Between them and wherever they go. Because they are, it should be hopefully the most joyful, one of the most joyful days of your life should be. Like even if the photographer and the wedding and the flowers and all that wasn't perfect. But this day too, like because of the joy they have, they can be a source of joy for many other people, right? <clears throat> and as he blessed Abraham with Sarah and Isaac with Rebecca, Jacob with Leah and Rachel, may the blessing of the Lord to his name be the honor. At the wedding of King of Galilee, I think that's the last time we say this, settle upon you in harmony, create spiritual love in your hearts, sustain your livelihood, fill your house, and grant you a long age and a happy life with blessed children. May he keep the rest of the brethren who attended with us with his mighty or protective right hand and all the days of their lives and fill their homes and keep away from them the temptations of the enemy. So as if that this, it's not just words for us, but we say the same thing, that be, if God is blessing our families, that means it's blessing those around us. As when God told Abraham the same, whoever you bless, I will bless. Right? Um, the priest has a special blessing that he's pronouncing the blessing of God for the people. But even those who are not priests, they can be themselves a blessing. Not just to give a blessing, but to be a blessing. And this is what it means to be Christian, right? That, like, wherever St. Anthony lived for all of those years, right? he lived in this place. He was not a priest, right? But he was in this, everyone would go from the end, try to spend a few seconds, minutes in the place where he lived. And we are blessed by that short period of time. The same, where <clears throat> that he perfected his Christian struggle. This is, I didn't know, this is one of our couples <laughs> in the diocese, but she's from the southern diocese. But this is where the same thing, you see the priest or the bishop blessing, and they are a cause of blessing for the rest. That's why the final blessing, you know, the bishop or the priest says, may God have mercy on us and bless us, cause us faith. The, the couple is right there, which doesn't happen any other time <laughs> when the priest is saying this book. Because God told Abraham, you stand and bless the people and say, may God have mercy on us and bless us, cause His face to shine upon us. We adopted it and added some extra thing. And they are, they are right below where He is saying this blessing. If you remember, that happened maybe a long time ago. <laughs> it happened, but you were standing at the seat of blessing. Again, it's only once we allow. The other time, you know the other time that we'll say it? <laughs> in your funeral <laughs> because even in your funeral you'll be you'll be there before God you'll be blessed and the people will be blessed also by attending that day so in, this is I think in the Russian church they actually give them an icon of Christ and the Holy Virgin and they're like leave and be the same we do the same thing when they come in he comes in with the oro and she comes with the shero mori so we're saying you are the king you are like the Lord Jesus Christ and you are like the Holy Virgin Mary. Leave and be the same thing. Uh, so, so sometimes we delay Shem Maria to the end. But we, we, uh, we give it to them in hymns, they give it to them in, in pictures, same thing, same idea. That you continue in this blessing. <coughs> um, children are inherited from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Um, and then the psalm before, a uh, few verses before, how blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. So this is the blessing upon the children as well. And that the blessing, the children are a blessing to the parents, right? Uh, to them, and also an extension of God's blessing uh, with them as well. So it works both ways. Sometimes it doesn't feel it, but <laughs> you, you remind it. <laughs> Second icon is the icon of unity. Icon of unity. How, and I tried to find as, as many icons as I could, I couldn't. The depiction, it doesn't work. How Eve comes out of the, it doesn't work. 
even for the children, if you can try to imagine, right, it's, the child will grow. But for Eve, fully grown, to come, it doesn't fit. But he's coming, she's coming from him for him, right? And that's why the two, what we see in the marriage, will become one flesh. And Christ is the one that's seen in this icon, but it's, is who is calling her out. And so this is the unity which we uh, ask also for God to unite in the same way. Um, you see how we do it in the Coptic icon, the same, right? Because you have, this is not an accidental. So Christ is blessing them. And St. Mary is also, like she's saying, be like me. <laughs> and he is the same. So that's why the icon of, of the marriage is this, right? Is this great uh, blessing. And so they are instructed, you, know, you probably memorized Ephesians 5 by now, I think, because by the time you're prepared to get married, and then in the wedding itself, and then any time uh, you are renewing, of course, for your anniversaries, you'll read probably Ephesians 5, or uh, St. John Chrysostom or something, Matthew, to see <coughs> the unity, right? The, the reason a man shall leave his father and mother to be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery. St. Paul is saying, this is a great, don't ask me details. <laughs> he said, how this happens? <laughs> it's a mystery. How, you know the first year they say, right, it's, is it easy? First couple of years? First couple of weeks? Mm -hmm. there's, there's like the, what do they call it? Honeymoon stage? I was gonna say, but how long does it last you? Two weeks? <laughs> some, some longer than others, I would just say. <laughs> some longer than others. But you'll say with every blessing that we receive in the church, there is that grace period, right? There's it's like perfect, everything is perfect. And then when you start to see some imperfections, it's a little bit but also with every blessing, there are attacks that come like from the devil. We'll talk, when we'll talk more about those. But I will talk about the icon of sacrifice. Because the, the, the wedding, the marriage, is a cross. A cross <coughs> that is, because everyone carries a cross, right? So she's not the cross, <laughs> he's not the, but the unity itself, because we say that as Christ died for the church, you also, you give your life for her. Give everything, right? Um, so that's why he says it's a way of sacrifice, some pain, some suffering involved, but it leads to the kingdom. That's why he chooses and she responds, right? This, to say that she is the ticket to the kingdom and she will help <laughs> him and he will help her, right? And the two, Going together, just like if you are running to the room, your room from here. <laughs> right? Someone is going to run a little bit faster <laughs> than the other one. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because it's very <laughs> hot outside. But what we're saying, we're all going to the same place, and and if there is a lot of pressure, so we have to be helping one another to get to that kingdom um, <clears throat> joyfully and. You know, with as, as many people as we can. Um, so it is our labor and work to live happily ever after, but it doesn't happen automatically. Like say, they get married, and then that's it. They live happily ever after. It takes work. It takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of um, putting the other person first, a lot of listening, a lot of patience, a lot of, well, I think it should be this, but okay, I will. <laughs> you, 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 you must know better <laughs> instead of saying I told you that it's not going to work <laughs> but I, I, uh, I, leave, I leave this decision for you how to um, limit our self will and our pride right? and to do everything my way when you're before the marriage you can do many things your own way when you're younger your parents don't let you so there's like this golden period of like real <laughs> and usually you make a lot of mistakes <laughs> you don't realize it you think this is the best time <laughs> it could be the worst of times 
because we all need someone to put in check, even the, the most, I don't know, say powerful person, like in, in our country, yes, needs a lot of checks and balances, especially maybe <laughs> not, not just our, like every, every ruler, every, no one, but every, everyone needs like someone to check, or else we can be in big trouble. And so we understand the same thing for uh, our marriages and for our families. Um, <clears throat> so that's why we say when the going gets tough, that carry the tough carry the cross. They don't, they don't move. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> so, you know, it's like the cherubim with the cross, like because Adam wanted to go back <laughs> and maybe leave Eve outside, <laughs> but he couldn't. <laughs> so they want to go inside, but he can't go. Not, not now. Why? Because you need someone who will sacrifice fully for both of you, and then you can both enter and you have to enter together, right? Because imagine, imagine, if Eve ate, told Adam, Adam said, oh, that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then God came and punished Eve. What would have, what would have happened? It would have been that, that's it. Like, there's no, none of us would be here. <laughs> and Adam would be happy. <laughs> but nobody, eventually, maybe, they'd be like, okay, I'll eat <laughs> and join Eve. <laughs> eventually. But God came after. Because so they, they were punished, or the consequence of their sin happened at the same time, and also they were brought back together to say, this is the marriage, the union, that we fall together, but one picks, we pick each other up, so that we will reach the kingdom together. Yes, you had it. You would have been missing another one. Is what? <laughs> you would have been missing another one. <laughs> this, is, this is part of me. Part of me. Uh, okay, but you say, ask not what your spouse can do for you. Like, how, how can you, like, this is the, this is the marriages that, and I should ask you, you know, that are really working, what you're always thinking, how can I improve? What can I surprise, do to surprise right in those first year or so, where you're trying to do something good, special, perfect, to reward the other, for no apparent reason. Sometimes now it's, if there's a little bit of bitterness, <laughs> then it works the opposite. Like, how can I have <laughs> <laughs> my way <laughs> and give it, right? Some people do, do that, but it's very difficult. What? And then someone says, what, what are you doing? <laughs> how can this make any sense, right? Because the, the objective is not for growth, but for something else, so that I can be in charge. Um, <clears throat> just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to, to, to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Um, this is the, I say, the call that Christ had for us, and that can be a good example for us in our uh, work here. Glory be to